painting the Project Camaro attempt number two tomorrow morning. Seven AM tomorrow, one percent chance with my luck that one percent chance is going to be right over my driveway. When you're taping, make sure that you tape up all the edges. I use newspaper. Uh, it works fine like this. Don't leave things like this because paint will get in there. Don't leave things like this, obviously, like that. Make sure all this gets taped up. I'm using a wide strip of tape. Pull off your tape. Leave a tab like this. You pull it. Use your thumb and your finger and rip it there leaves you another tab that's so you're not trying to find this edge every time pull it off edge using prep spray and towels just regular garage towels from uh, auto parts store they are somewhat lint free and that's what you want don't use paper towels from the house. This is a tack cloth it's coated with beeswax. Doesn't stick to anything, but things stick to it. So you want to wipe the car down before, right before you shoot, and then have it handy just in case, uh, you know, in between coats. Okay, I'm going to attempt something. First time ever, I'm sure, in the history of auto painting. To use this paint I mixed up a week ago, which in my experience, usually this is uh, a gelatinous mess, but basically cured paint. That still looks fine. It's mixed and everything, so I'm going to give that a shot. This is not the most ideal of painting prep area. FYI, everything should be clean. Put that back on. That should be more than enough. All the birds are cheering for me. Okay. We got. 10 PSI at the gun. Love this gun. Absolutely love it. I brought the uh, fluid control. This is air. This is your fluid control. This you just adjust as needed for heavy or light coats. Just to get it where you want it. So you can shoot both coats, same consistency, or if you're doing more, adjust as needed. And then you regulate your air down here with this air regulator and make sure you got a moisture trap in line because there is moisture in compressed air okay first coat of black is sprayed looks pretty decent I went a little heavy hoping it'll flow together that'll reduce uh, orange peel Do one more coat after it uh, tacks up a little bit and this is when you want to take a look around and make sure you got paint on everything that you intended to have paint on 
make sure if you got anything thin, you go ahead and make a mental note to go back. Edges are very important all the way around. Make sure you got anything thin like this. Well, this is flashing off because it's uh, satin color, but I'm gonna go ahead and hit that again. Make sure that you got paint like on this car. I had missed under here and looks, yeah, and I still missed under there. I'm gonna hit that again first. Make sure that gets covered on the second coat, which you can touch somewhere. Yeah, that's, that's pretty much dry to the touch. It's ready for a second coat. I'm gonna go ahead and spray some black on the hood. Not sure exactly what I'm gonna do yet, but I'm gonna spray this whole entire center section and do something with it. You're gonna paint outside. You need a pair of tweezers. I've had these forever and they're old and rusty, but if they really come in handy. If you get a little bug or a little piece of dust in the paint while it's still wet, you can very carefully pick it out and then cover that with the next coat. Nobody ever know. And it's something you don't have to go back and fix later. Most important part. I do not recommend painting under trees. That is probably the worst case scenario. You don't want trees, you don't want wind, and you don't want bugs. If you can do your paint job without those three issues, you're ahead of the game. This, I'm rolling the dice. This, my friends, is what they call orange peel. It's, um... Not the best thing in the world to have, but not the end of the world either this should all be nice and smooth I could have probably went a little bit slower and put a little bit more paint on to get it to flow together but it's not the end of the world you can sand this wet sand it with like uh, 1500 grit and then buff it it'll be as smooth as glass if you put enough paint on let me show you why auto body shops charge so much to do paint and body work. You get sprayed in a spray booth, so you don't have little things like this floating around. I don't know if you can see that right there is a little white, there it is, a little white speck of dust. Which is not a big deal. Uh, they won't send it out with this orange peel. They shouldn't anyway. And then you have little guys like this walking on your paint. Now the paint's dry enough where he's not going to be an issue, which is okay. And then you have, I don't know if you can see it with a tree in the background, but there's some anomalies here that won't, you can't really see until, uh, until the paint sprayed and you got this nice glossy finish. Now this is a satin, so it'll hide some of that, but things like this are so hard to see. There you go. When this is all different colors and whatnot. You wonder why Chip Foos gets so much. Back here looks really nice. I recommend you get coffee after you're done painting in the morning. You don't have the shakes while you're doing it. <laughs>